Hey guys, Hot Rod Reverend here. Before we get into the video real quick, I want to tell you about the website, hotrodreverend.com. Visit the website, you'll find out why I have the name Hot Rod Reverend. I am a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want you to visit that page and see what the gospel is all about. Number two, visit hotrodreverend.com shop. One of the greatest deals I've got going is this. I've got a digital download for only 10 bucks that includes all of the pages, almost a thousand of the 1949 to 59 Ford parts catalogs, illustrations, all the rest of it in these catalogs. In addition to those two catalogs, I've also got a late 50s Ford engine shop manual that covers a little bit more than the Y block. It covers six cylinder as well. And then I've got owner's manuals. There's a lot in that download. Visit that today. Thank you for supporting the channel. Back at it again today with a great upgrade for your Holly 94. These are very common to the 1954, 55, and 56 Fords. There were some 1957 F100s that came with the largest version, CFM version of the Holly 94 on some of the trucks, but it's very, very rare to see. I think we came on an ECW manifold. It's very important to remember that in 1954, five and six, Ford especially matched each carburetor to the distributor. The distributors were called Lodomatics. They only had vacuum advance, no centrifugal advance at all. So what ends up happening in the modern day is a lot of guys, they'll swap intake manifolds. Maybe you've seen my video on that. You'll swap carburetors, whatever it might be. A lot of guys end up doing that and they forget that there's a difference in the distributors. So how do you know the difference? How, do you, how can you tell if you have a distributor that is vacuum advance only or one that has vacuum advance and centrifugal advance? I'm so glad you asked. Let's look at this first photo. Pop the distributor cap and just take a look at your advance plate. When you look at your advance plate, if you can see the springs, then you have a Lodomatic vacuum advance only distributor that was especially matched to the carburetor that came with your vehicle. If when you pop the cap, you look at the advance plate and the springs, the advance springs are hidden underneath the advance plate, then you know that you have a distributor that has both vacuum and mechanical advance. That's the quickest and fastest and easiest way to tell. Of course, a distributor cap height is different, but if you don't have two to compare, it's gonna be hard to do. Quickest way is just to pop the cap and take a look at what you have on the advance plate. So what we have to remember with the Holly 94 is this. Since it came with a vacuum advance only distributor, if you want to upgrade your distributor and you want to put in something modern that will have vacuum and mechanical advance as well, you've got to change the vacuum signal that's going to your vacuum advance on your distributor. There's a good way to do that. We're going to go through this process. Now guys, you may be wondering, what, what's, what's the big deal here? Why do I have to do this modification? Understand here with this distributor, 57 to 64, this will work with your Holly 94 or your Holly 4000. But if you don't change your vacuum signal, you're going to be sending way too much vacuum to this advanced canister. You're going to have problems with detonation. You're going to have issues with tuning and all the rest of it. You want to make sure that you're getting ported vacuum like you have on most modern carburetors. That's why this upgrade is very important if you're going to run your Holly 94 or maybe you're going to run three deuces and you're gonna run three Holly 94s, whatever it might be, on that three deuce setup and get yourself a 57 to 64. And this is a better, this is a better distributor than the Lodomatic, hands down. It really wakes up a Y block. It really does well with advance and all the rest of it. This is a modification that you wanna make if you keep your Holly 94 in your Y block. Understand, this came with a spark control valve. This came with a port here that feeds a lot of vacuum, even as you're you know, hitting the gas and you're accelerating, decelerating, all that kind of thing, that makes that original Lodomatic vacuum advance only distributor very responsive to what's happening here. Now, I know a lot of guys are wondering, why would I even want to upgrade my distributor? Why would I want to go with a vacuum advance and mechanical advance as well? That changed for Ford in 1957. We ended up getting better gas mileage, better response from the, from the ignition, and it gave you a little bit more power, all that kind of thing. So if you wanna keep your Holly 94, later on we'll have a video on the Holly 4000 as well, but if you wanna keep your original distributor or if you wanna go with the three deuces 
like what I have here on the workbench, and I've got three of them. You can tell that one of these air horns on the top is, is the air horn for a truck. It's a little bit different air cleaner, so you got to watch out for that. And of course, there's some differences among the years, 54, 5, and 6, with CFM. It's best if you can get a matched set of three Holly 94s that are the same, or at least keep your middle carb on your three-deuce setup, maybe separate of the other two, have the other two on the ends kind of match each other with CFM. Some guys get all technical with that, and that's fine. However, if you want to use three deuces and you want to take that middle carb and give it the right vacuum signal for a 57 to 64 or maybe an aftermarket distributor that will have both vacuum and mechanical advance, you want to make sure that signal's correct. Now, my friend Ted Eaton in Texas has a great article on his website about how to go about doing this. We're going to go ahead and take some video footage of just making this upgrade. It's not that difficult to do. Let's take a look at the tools and the equipment that we're going to need to get it done. What you're going to need, you're going to need a 632 tap, quarter inch NPT tap. That's very important because you're going to put your adapter there to give you a, this is a 3 16 that way we can go back to a 57 to 64 distributor. A plug, this is where the port is located or to block off the port. There where your original vacuum advance, the hard line is located on that Holly 94. I like to start with a 1 16th drill bit just to get that hole started. It is kind of difficult because it's angled right there. We'll look at that in a minute. And then also 1 8th of a inch drill bit that that makes your passageway there for the vacuum to go through back to this port there some jb weld you can also use some soft lead obviously a 632 set screw this is just a pile of them i have and then of course i ordered some extras and different things because i do this on occasion a drill or a drill press I have quite a stash of Holly 94s in inventory and in storage, so I've got parts and pieces. I've got a base right here I'm going to be working on. You are going to need to disassemble your base from your uh, fuel bowl portion, this middle portion of the Holly 94. I would suggest to you that you do this when you're going to rebuild your carburetor, that way you can blow out all the passages, make sure everything's super clean before you put it back on your car. But for the sake of what we're doing, I'll just disassemble one of these. I will go ahead and use this base since it's already cleaned up and ready to go. Just a quick word of explanation. We removed the spark control valve. You can see that there's a port that comes through the rear of your carburetor base. And then it goes right here to the inside. Of course, that's reading the vacuum uh, that's, that's coming down through uh, the bores of the carburetor here. What we need to do is we need to go ahead and tap in here for our port for vacuum advance to our modern distributor. We need to seal this port off. And then what we're going to do is we're going to drill a hole straight down and make a passage right to that port right there that's inside of our cylinder bore. So let's go ahead and tap this first. The quarter inch NPT tap is so close in size to your original spark control valve port, you don't need to drill anything out. You're basically just re-threading this port right here. All right, we'll make sure those threads are cleaned out and then we're gonna test fit our adapter. This looks like it's just fine here. All right, so we're, we're good to go. Next, we're going to mix up some JB Weld. We don't need much, just a very little bit here, pea size, and we're going to seal off that port right there. You want to make sure you don't have any JB Weld or anything, or if you use lead sticking out, that's going to be in your way of your threads for your adapter. Just about a pea-sized drop of JB Weld in there. Just make sure it's all smoothed out so it won't get in the way of our adapter going into the bore. The next part is probably what is the most difficult, and it can be done though, and that is to drill a hole straight down through this port right there. Okay, And then you can tell I've got a light back there, but we're going to go to that port right there. So we need to just go straight down. Now, the way I like to do this, of course, if you have a drill press, you can do that. But the problem is it's going to have a tendency to kind of walk. Um, 
I think Ted uses like an end mill or something like that. Some of us may not have access to whatever. I start with the 1 16th, a smaller bit. And what I do is I go in at an angle first and kind of create myself a, a divot that I'm going to use. So. Basically what I've done, I've started the hole. You can see it there uh, in the middle. Sorry, I'm holding a light and holding my camera too. So if you look right in the middle of the screen, you can see where I've added that hole right there. And then we're just going to go straight down and make sure that we connect with that port. All right, kind of flip this around so you can see, you, you can tell when uh, you've, you've made a connection here. You can see that, you can see it coming out, obviously, okay? So you just want to make sure that we're, that we're right there through that passage. We're going to blow it out with air here off camera. Now that we've blown it out, essentially what we have done is, you can, if you look way down in there, you can see there's a port. I'll try to put it right in the middle of the screen on the, at the back there, okay? What's happened is we've sealed off this port that kind of, would come past the spark control valve a little bit or past part of the diaphragm. And then up here, what we've done after we seal that off is we've made sure that this port, just to give us what we say ported vacuum, right? Um, from that hole there, all the, obviously all the way back through our brass adapter. So we're going to get a great reading for our 57 to 64 distributor now. Tap a... 632 right here in this port. Now don't don't tap into your idle mixture screw passages. These are those are these two right here, okay? But basically when you take your base and uh, what you just did here, all right? What you just did right there, uh, you basically want to go ahead and match that up and go ahead and tap that to block off that port. You can tell this carburetor needs to be rebuilt and that's that's the best time to do this kind of work because you're going to have shavings, you'll have everything everywhere. So, All right, just a little 632 set screw we're going to put in here. Just want to make sure that when we're done tightening this down that it is flush and that uh, you have no problem getting your gasket to seal. Put your carburetor back together and make sure it's tight. I suggest you use some Teflon on the adapter here and then also your plug. So now that we got our base back on here, we'll go ahead and put these things in. Putting the plug in here, of course, to keep you from having many small vacuum leaks. Tight. Put our adapter in there, of course, our JB welds all. And there we go, we're pretty much set and ready to get the vacuum signal that we need to our distributor. Understand, if you don't do this modification and you go ahead and use your Holley 94, you're going to be sending too much vacuum to your vacuum advance on your 57 to 64 distributor. And that could be a big problem. Guys, that's a wrap on the Holly 94. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, thank you for subscribing and supporting the channel. Don't forget, visit hotrodreverend.com and visit the shop. We've got all kinds of Hot Rod Reverend gear, ball caps, t-shirts, coffee mugs, stickers, all the rest of it, stuff for your pets even. We will be having a follow-up video on the Holly 4000 and how to get a Holly 4000 prepped for a 57 to 64 distributor as well. So pay attention to the channel. Glad you subscribed and we'll see you on the next one.